Make a comment for Bernie Blackout News. What does this mean to you? This means we're in place. We're in solidarity with all the people who are fighting the good fight for Mother Earth, our sacred water. All right, stand so together. We have found that our government has been complicit with the utilities and has sacrificed what is not theirs to sacrifice. The authorities that ignore our pleas will not prevail. When our numbers rise up and say no, we will not let this happen. I ask you to stand firm. Say no to the moment, no more fossil fuel infrastructure. Say no to this pipeline. So we are out here shutting down the uh, Vermont gas pipeline construction that's being done by Michaels Corporation, a company out of Wisconsin. It's the same company that bought the or built the um, southern leg of the Keystone. It's the same company uh, working in North Dakota. So it feels like a real strong solidarity with our um, shutting it all down today. Right on the construction site. Ready to go? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! 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 the streets with justice, we are freedom. We are the seas that take root as we tear the fortress down. We are the rising of the moon. We are the shifting of the town. We are the sea that takes root as we tear the fortress down. And it was, uh, it was the Michaels Corporation that uh, moved their bulldozers, suddenly jump, a jump of 15 miles in North Dakota into, into the Standing Rock area and uh, began bulldozing their sacred sites, which were actually over the fence from the reservation, because there was, going, there was about to be an, an appeal to the court to... Uh, for an injunction to stop the construction. So the day before, they moved those bulldozers and they destroyed the sacred sites. They destroyed the evidence. And so, at the same time, interestingly, the, the police or the National Guard were not there, and the Michaels Corporation also hired security guards with dogs who proceeded to attack the people who jumped the fence, understandably enraged by the destruction of the, of, of the sacred sites that they that it was their duty to protect. Wow. Um, so that they were set upon with dogs. Eight people were bitten, including one child, and uh, many people were pepper sprayed in the face. Uh, before the security company finally backed away because the protesters were relentless. Uh, understandably so. This this is their heritage. It's just being destroyed and they're being treated like second-class citizens. You know, no security company would ever be set on, on people like at this demonstration today, would they? But they feel it's okay to set dogs and pepper spray Native Americans who are who are defending their their cultural relics, things that are things that are sacred and important to them, but apparently those things mean nothing to to the uh, fossil fuel industry. Our elected officials and the big company bosses agree to build a pipeline for our home. The expense of poor hazies like me. Expensive for hayseeds like me. Expensive for hayseeds like me. To build a pipeline through our home. The expensive for hayseeds like me. And the Secret Stone Warrior Camp, the Red Warrior Camp.
and all of their allies. There are over about 100 tribes that come together out there to, to save and protect their water from the pipeline that could be going across to Missouri yeah. and into into Illinois. And they, for many, as we know, many many years, they've been beaten up and down, downtrod, and now they're uniting like never before. And they've sent a message to the rest of us to unite with them, and they become a, the leaders, the pathfinders for us to follow. And the solidarity movement we have here is in unit. It's in. It's to unify with them. Their fight is out there. Our fight is here, which is so important to us because we have our own water that we're trying to protect and it is sacred. We're, they're entering now the Outer Creek uh, watershed right now, which is our lifeblood for everybody who lives on this side of, of the Green Mountain State. Without our watershed, we will not have any kind of quality of life. And they are, this project here is only a trans, it's a transmission line to get into lucrative markets in southern New England. It's not going to benefit Vermont at all. All along this pipeline, it originated over 3,000 miles away in Alberta. Mm -hmm. And it's a venomous silver snake that has, to take it to, has destroyed the lives of thousands of people along its route. And at the extraction zone up in Alberta, it's devastated that water. It's devastated the, the air, the, the soil. It leaks everywhere. It's under high pressure. I was told that it creates a static charge that they have to ground every so many feet. If it doesn't, if there's a crack in that pipeline, it'll explode. There's got to be a 300-foot incinerization zone that nobody can occupy. We want organic farming in Vermont. Wherever this travels through, you can't have organic farms. You lost your able to, to certify your land for that. And we need this. We need the Champlain Valley as our food supply, as food out west dwindles, and just in the the wildlife and the, the waterfall that so anyway that's what I had to say about that I can keep going he said it all <laughs> he did great but no I mean I'm so I'm a mother of a 13 and or almost 14 year old boy and you know it's really important for the you know as they say seven generations like we need to protect our future and this is not how we do it um, drive my son and I drive up and down plank road quite often um, um, and the first time we saw the, the wetland signs and the endangered species signs along the road, which were clearly along the length of the pipeline, we were like, what the hell is that? Like, how are they going to avoid that? The pipeline has to go straight, and the line is going straight along the side of this road, and there are these wetland signs. And as we saw when we were walking up here this morning, they, they bulldozed and laid pipe, and right on the other side of the of the trench were little wetland signs. So they're clearly not following any protocol to protect the wetlands. Um, and I have friends whose land has been destroyed, who, you know, they're, they're, they had to, they got taken by eminent domain and they paid them off, I don't know, a million dollars. And um, now she's dealing with them digging it up, you know, their land up and blasting their land. and. Mm -hmm. Um, it's insane. It's really insane in her gardens. And <laughs> so, from the first time that Vermont Gas showed up in one of the towns, and the first Don said, uh, if you don't want us here, we will not come. And from that point on, town after town has said, we don't want you. We don't want a pipeline. We don't want fracked gas. We have sat in at the governor's office, we have gotten arrested, we have protested, we have written thousands of letters and documents to the Public Service Board, to the Public Service Department, who are supposed to be acting in our interest, and they are not. So we are here today to say no, not on our watch. This is not a done deal. Now our elected officials and the big company bosses agree to build a pipeline through our home. The expense of poor Hayseeds like me. The expense of poor Hayseeds like me. The expense of poor Hayseeds like me. To build a pipeline through our home. At the expense of poor Hayseeds like me. But now I've roused up a little. I see the resistance that will bring us justice will be made up of hazies like me.
make me the resistance that will bring us justice will be made up of hazy fire. Oh, with the indigenous led movement um, out west. Yeah. And so now we're going to hear words from Carol Irons, who is an Abenaki elder. We come first to honor the Lakota people. Yes. yes. They're doing what the original instructions told all the Native nations to do in one way or another, to protect the Mother Earth that nurtures us. Their courage and their warrior discipline to stand up to the bullying and the dogs and the pressures and the arrests are an example to all of us. We need to follow that example. Yeah. Turtle Island, which is our term for this continent, is under siege. It's under siege all over, and as you can see here, it's under siege in Vermont as well. And you've spoken of Mother Earth, and we always understood that Mother Earth is a living being. This is a pulsing, living being. We walk on her breast every day, and we're obligated to walk gently, not tear into her. Her blood is our blood. The veins of water flowing in her soil and deep in her centers are the same as the blood in our bodies. Without her blood, we cannot live. She can live without us, but we can't live without her. Her breath is our breath. I don't know if you're aware of it, but our Mother Earth has breathing holes at strategic places on this planet where the wind blows steadily. And sometimes they're just, I've seen one, I've been to one. They're not huge. They're not great big giant mammoth cave type things, but they're breathing holes where the air flows in very steadily for six hours, very steadily and then it shifts and flows back out for six hours in a rhythmic breathing pattern that is planet-wide. We also know that the standing ones that came first on this Mother Earth, the plant nations, they breathe for us and we breathe for them. What they breathe in is what we have breathed out, the carbon dioxide. So if you wipe out hundreds of acres of forest land, those great standing ones can no longer absorb the carbon and absorb the heat of Father's Son to help cool the planet. What madness is this? So the plant nation, as they breathe out, they breathe out oxygen that we need to breathe in. We cannot live without the standing ones, the plant nation. As well, they give us our foods and our medicines, and they support all the other life forms. So as you've already said, the waters and the winds, we all need for life. These projects, the projects in North Dakota, the fragging in, in Pennsylvania, the shale oil that Enbridge does up in Alberta, those are fueling the kinds of projects they're doing here in Vermont. And you can't disconnect it from what they're doing along the mountain ranges because the waters often rise in the high places on Mother Earth because that's where Odzihozo pushed up the land and it fractured some of the deep rock. And the waters often rise up there and then flow down the mountainsides, nurturing all the life of that ecology until it gets down in the rivers below. You don't want the pipelines going under those rivers. We know what can happen. It also happens on the ridge lines. These are the same system. It's the same waters. And the wildlife is all affected, and the people that live nearby are all affected. So even as you're standing here in solidarity with North Dakota, what you're doing here to stop a pipeline what you do down in southern Vermont to stop them doing that in the Green Mountain National Forest where they're starting, in fact, the governor's going to do a ribbon cutting on Monday, I hear, for another huge wind turbine project. Oh my God. And it def 
those wind turbine projects do as much damage to the environment as oil pipelines do. Yes, they do. And yeah. So there, we need to we need to rise up all over. This is Abenaki country. We're brothers and sisters with the Lakota people, also with all the other indigenous nations. There's got to be a rising. This is the beginnings of it. So just for the last few years, where people have begun being arrested, they've begun standing up to the corporations, they've begun standing up to the politicians that are the allies of the corporations. They've been bought off, folks, big time. Big time. What we can do here locally is an echo of what they're trying to do in North Dakota and what they've been trying to do up in Canada with the First Nations fighting the shale oil stuff up there that's one of the companies that did the, the Lowell wind turbine project here in Vermont. They're all interconnected. This is, it's, it's like a snake pit. So uh, we give you thanks for this. We recognize the great web of life. Anytime you tear a hole in that great web of life, the ripple effects in concentric circles way out from the footprint is what you also have to look at. And this is what the corporations don't want you to look at. They got a little road, they say. But it may be a turnpike, and it may be doing something with the waters and the winds and the wildlife that, in fact, ripple out over years and over decades. And so the damages that you will see on down the road are even more cumulative than what you see in the immediate present. You know that from an oil leak because it's more visible. You also need to know it from those huge solar installations that fry the songbirds that fly above it. Mm. What do songbirds do? What do songbirds do? They have everything to do with plant propagation, with the seeds. They have everything to do with the balance between the insects that are good and harmful to our crops and all. Also, when they come in the spring, those high calls of the songbirds put their energy into the air and into the surface of the earth and that actually stimulates the growth of the seeds. They've been doing studies about this up in Canada. And so the songbirds are also essential for the plant life that gives us our food and our medicine. It's a great web of life and you, you can't mess with one part of the web without it affecting all the rest. Um, I, really, I really appreciate so many of you showing up and I hope you'll keep doing this all over not only the state of Vermont, we've got New York State, we've got New Hampshire, we've got Southern Quebec province. I can't go across the border now, but we need to stand with, with all the people and those who came after, but to whom our old perspective and our way of life speaks to their spirit, we appreciate all of you standing with us. The Abenaki people went through very bad times, as you know, for centuries. And even in the 20th century, there was a eugenics program. And so the only way our people could survive was to keep their heads down and not even take ownership of their own culture. They couldn't do it because the children were being taken away. People were being sterilized. Uh, children were separated from their families and put in institutions and foster homes uh, simply because they were Native American. It also happened to people with disabilities. It happened to other non-Caucasian ethnic folks. And this was happening in the 1920s and 30s. So uh, a lot of us, our parents and our grandparents, no longer passed on the teachings because it would have meant destroying their own family and their own children. So we are recovering that and we are not as strong as what you folks are showing today, but we do appreciate it. We talk quietly among ourselves. Gradually some of us are coming out and more willing to own our heritage. But if you're wondering why the Abenaki aren't as strongly here, it's because they had to survive by hiding in plain sight. And there are many people with native heritage who, who don't either don't know it because it wasn't passed on or don't still don't dare speak. I talked with my elderly aunt a couple decades ago and was trying to ask her some and she didn't even really want to talk about it. She wouldn't talk about it. And she finally said, because I worked for an agency. That wasn't a good thing, I guess. And she looked at me and she said, first they find out all about you, then they come for you. Mm -hmm. And that long shadow of the eugenics, which she had lived through, and she had not had children, 
was the reason that she wouldn't even talk about what happened. And so we welcome those of you who come to stand in honor of the Standing Rock Lakota people, yes, in honor of Abenaki country, protecting the land here is an echo and a reaffirmation of their work to protect the land on the other side of Turtle Island. And we're all in it together. Mm -hmm. And yes, the corporations, it's short term, it's greed and it's power, and we have to overthrow them. So yes. we have to ask that everybody join in that revolt. Not everybody can be arrested all the time, I understand that, but we're going to be down Monday confronting Shumlin down there in this Green Mountain National Forest because they're starting to take that over now for the same kind of destruction. So I thank you very much. Uh, you've honored our people by coming. We hope to honor you as well and join the fight bit by bit as our people come out from under those shadows. And we're all in this together. Uliuni. Take out the dams. Stand up to oil. Protect the plants and renew the soil. Who's gonna stand up and save the earth? She's had enough. Who's gonna say that she's had enough? And it's pretty clear that we've shut down construction along this whole stretch for right now. Especially for us marginalized people of color and indigenous peoples, these pipelines represent something more than pieces of metal being buried into the ground. They represent the struggle for life or death. We stand in solidarity with those at Standing Rock, putting their bodies on the line, fighting for their future, which in the end is all connection, connected, which in the end is our future.